Well, I mean, my first, when I was working for the ABC News, I got attacked at 140 k's an hour I was doing. I got attacked by the militia. Um, I, I was looking after 12 people at the time and I was, there was only me and one other. I had three vehicles in front of us, four, four people in each car. And, um, and yeah, it's a quiet night on the road. It was this perceived um, secure Iraq. You know, it's, it's, you know the, the statue had come down in Ferdos Square. And um, yeah, it was a perceived sort of safety. And um, I saw a car coming up in the rearview mirror, which then they started to um, put the rounds down on us. So I, I basically swerved the car into the central lane, managed to get them boxed in and open fire on them, managed to close them down. But um, so as that went on, um, but then from that moment on, I mean, and that's the point, you know, I was, I was still in that sort of despair. That Why sort of, fool's gold? You said earlier fool's, fool's gold. gold because yeah. it's you, you, because your life, you know, it's six weeks on, six weeks off, you're in a war zone, you, you're probably going to lose your life, possibly, you could lose a limb, there's no insurance. You know, there wasn't proper insurance at that time. So if you lost, I mean, we had a bullet each, and it was if any of us got bombed or shot, or, you know, it looked like we we're, were going to be crippled for the rest of our lives, then we'd shoot each other. Yeah. And that's the way we operated, because the, there was no insurance. Um, and it's just that life, you know, when I look back and everyone gets pulled over, you know, it was 13,000 a month for me going to the military, 13,000, I mean, for anyone, 13 grand a month tax free is massive, you know, for me as a kid, which I still, you know, was 32 at the time, um, call it a kid, but, um, you know, it's, you're drawn in by the cash, the cash, the cash and, yeah. and then you understand, you know, I mean, after six years of living in a war zone, being attacked on a daily basis, that attacking rack where everything came down on me in a heartbeat. And that was the first time in my life where I, had, I couldn't call in air support. I couldn't call in naval gunfire. I had nothing but the responsibility of 12 people in front of me. And that was overwhelming. And mm. I had to snap myself out of that. Yeah. Otherwise I'd have, I'd have frozen and, and probably not be here today. Mm. But, um, so it's all those things. It's the fact that you're drawn by the money, but you know, it's the money's, Money should always be a byproduct of the passion for something you're doing. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't, you should never be drawn by the money, but that's why I call it fool's gold. You know, if you're drawn for the money, yeah. um, especially in that line of work, you know, and the risks and the, the balance of life. I mean, I used to come back home after that six weeks off and I was an absolute mess, Yeah. you know, and then you go back. But then there was, it was, it was quite a kind of a contradictory really, because I, there was, there's, I call it peace in war. You know, I used to get home, I couldn't wait to get back to Baghdad. You know, because it's black and white over there. You know, people want to kill you, fine, but you'll kill them if, if you get the upper hand. Um, but it was black and white. There was no white noise going on. You know, you come back to civilian life and it's the same when you leave the military and there's, you know, your girlfriend or your wife's talking about someone's parked over your driveway or the neighbors, mm. you know, there's, there's a tree overhanging. And you're like, oh, fucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that must be a complete yeah, culture I, shock. I, yeah. it's, it's absolutely, it's horrendous. And you're like, you just can't handle it. And still now I can't handle that small stuff. Yeah. I've, I've got, I'm a lot more tolerant to it, but I can't handle the small stuff. It's just because like, you, what have you, of what you're seeing and you know what's yeah, important in life, it's, I guess. It's just when the more people are in this sort of um, sheltered society, they become micromanagers of their own lives and other people's. And you're focusing on many little problems that really don't mm, make a first difference. world problems. Yeah. yeah, and it's you know, people focusing on you know someone's tree overhanging. Yeah. Like, you've got too much time on your hands. It's the same in business, isn't it? You know, I get a lot of people that work for me going, "Oh, have you seen what such and such is doing?" I'm like, "I don't give a shit yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. Focus on what we're doing." Mm. You know what I mean? We should we should be too busy to focus on them. Yeah. So, but people get bogged down with with the minuscule little things in life. Mm. Um, yeah, but fool's gold, you know, it's the fact that, that that job is not, Yeah. you know, going to a war zone, being drawn by the money, mm. you know, it's, it's not, um, not productive. Mm.